Hello everybody, welcome to the Creation Kit Scripting Series Papyrus Tutorials by myself. This is the 19th part of the Events and Functions unit, and we are going to talk about global functions. Before I even go into the details, because this is probably a little bit of voodoo <laughs> to some people out there, let's go to the Creation Kit. I'm going to show off a logic barrel, because I was tinkering a little bit beforehand. And I made this script called Global Function Script Test. Let's look inside of it real quick. Real simple, we have an event on init, we have an int a, an int b, we make a result, we call some function called add to. That's not called anywhere in here. Let's see what this actually looks like in game before we go further. Here we are loading up the game. What do you know? That logic barrel gave us a message box. We just added from an outside program for 24. That was int A was 12 and int B was 12, so we got 24. How does this work? We're about to answer that question and we're going to also answer why you would use something like this. Going back to the slides, we're using global functions here. What is a global function? It is a function that is called outside of whatever script you're trying to run it on. So, that add to, that's contained somewhere else, not in the script that we ran. The, so, global functions are not attached to objects, as we saw, and you can't use some of the special keywords, uh, self, you can't have anything game-specific. Well, you can have some stuff game-specific, but nothing that actually relies on referencing stuff. <laughs> because it's a library, essentially, that's going to contain all these things that are global functions. And you're going to have more than one script potentially calling them. And you can also make this so somebody else can download it, use it in their mods. It's a great modder resource potential here. So, the typical use, I already went to some of this, uh, used to make script libraries such as math libraries, um, and the like. Uh, it contains functions that will be used by multiple scripts. That's something else I mentioned already. Um, I don't have any good examples for this video, but in the future I can show that off. So, if you you might have saw it a little bit, but we didn't really stay on the screen too long. But there was a key word that was used at the very top called import. Import is how you bring your global function into your actual script that you're calling from the other scripts. I'll go into that shortly. Um, import is used um, <coughs> in whichever script calls that you're going to have. So if you have script A, script B, script C, that all are calling script D, you'd use import D. Uh, at the top of each of those scripts. So let's go ahead and test out global functions after going over a little bit of the details and such. So let's first look at how this is structured before we actually create global functions. So we're going to go back to the logic barrel <laughs> for a moment and we're going to stay on this screen for a little bit just break down what's going on here. So it's attached to the barrel, and then you have the import, and I called it in this case AJDPR sample math library. <laughs> and how can we see that script? Well, if we go to the top where gameplay is, and then papyrus script manager is what you will want. I already have the filter for math here. So let's double click on this. Notice it's going to open just a regular Notepad document. So if you want to use Notepad++ or something with it, first create the script and then you go to your Skyrim folder to actually make the edits. In this video, because um, of what we're doing, I'm not going to actually go through and do that. We're going to use Notepad bad practice to just use standard notepad 
but for the purposes of showing this off, we are. So, notice there's also some imports in here, so you can import from other global libraries out there. And then we have the add to function. It just takes in an integer and another integer, and it returns both of those added together. Notice here we have the global keyword. This is how you declare a global function. So let's create our own. We're going to pick on factorial this time. So, the purpose of this function is going to be taking a desired value and returning the factorial of it. Parameters is going to be the desired value. We're going to work backwards in recursion for this one. Returns the factorial value. Okay, so it's going to be an integer that we are creating, and we're going to call it n here, and then let's just say global. So, if and is equal to zero, we will want to... Oh, I probably want some spaces in this, don't I? We want to return one, else... Well, we don't want the else yet, actually. We want to make the other base case because the values of 0 and the values of 1, they're both going to return 1. But we don't necessarily need 1 in here. We can if we want to. But I'm just going to go back to the else. I just wanted to show that off, though. <laughs> So this is going to be where we call the recursive function again. So return is going to be n times, and then factorial of n minus 1. And here we want to save. Notice you don't have any compiler or anything like this because we're in Notepad++ right now. So if we want to actually compile this, we're going to right click on our script, navigate to compile, and it told us it succeeded for that blip that you saw it on the screen. So now that we have that, notice we are referencing the math library here. So, let's do an n of 5. int factorial 5. And we're going to say factorial of n. And we're going to create a message for a message box. factorial of 5 is, and then we're going to add on, uh, if I can type, the factorial of 5. Notice, it's really simple, you don't have any functions called in here, because we declared it inside the sample math library that we just created. So, let's go down here and add our second message box that will show up in the game. So, and that is it. Let's save it. 
just to make sure everything's gonna work. Voila. So this should work in the game, and I will see everybody in the game so we can test out the factorial function. Here we are loading the game up again. We're going to see different message boxes appear this time. So we have our add by two, <laughs> and then we have the factorial of five that has appeared, and that is the correct result. So. There you go. You can use this for anything that you need to calculate if you had some sort of gold calculation formula or something like that that uses an items based value you could do something like that. Or if you wanted to calculate what the weather should be there's a plethora of things that you can do and have it common to use throughout your uh, scripting experience that you will need to deliver whatever mod you're making. And now we're going to go to the end of the slides to wrap up what we've just covered. And that's it for this video. So we just covered what global functions are, functions that you can put into a script that's not attached to any object and then call it anywhere from within creation kit for any of the objects you want to attach a script on. We went over the import keyword, which you can use on those scripts that you create since they're not attached to an object, so you can attach them to whatever script you're working with. And you can use it in any fashion. There are a little bit of restrictions on, you can't have any references in there, and so on. But if you're just doing basic calculations or basic manipulation, making a library is the way you want to go if you're going to use it in multiple places. If you're only using it in one spot, then maybe it's not something you need. Um, if you are sharing it with uh, people so they can use it in their own mod, you definitely want to make a script like this with global functions and such. Anyway, if you have questions about what was covered in this video, I mod Skyrim. I've tinkered with the Fallout tools a little bit. I'm busy with a lot of things, so I don't do as much of that now as you probably see from the delay in this video recording. And But I'm still free for personal messages. I get them constantly asking for, well, what's wrong with this? Do you have any ideas with this? I'm more than happy to answer. Uh, here's my forum profile and uh, my Nexus profile if you want to message me. Leave a comment here in the YouTube video if you want, and I will see everybody on the next episode.